Now I'll tell you what doesn't warm my leftist heart. The fact that Jordan Peterson is still alive. This man hasn't been seen since Thanksgiving, maybe last year. We don't really know. I thought about asking producer Dave to come on and give us the rundown. But the whole beef daughter Jordan Peterson saga, if you don't know, Jordan Peterson subscribes to a diet of all beef. It has some sort of trendy name. I don't know what the fuck it's called. But his daughter as well, earning her the nickname Beef Daughter. And the conspiracy theory was that Beef Daughter has taken over the Jordan Peterson alt-right online can't get laid like poop boy internet trolls that the the mantle of that empire has actually offed her dad so that she could become the head of it but apparently yesterday peterson gave us a little update hi everyone hey jordan some of you may know but others will not it's been a long while since I put up any new content on this YouTube channel. I'm well aware. I've been suffering from impaired health, severely impaired health, as a consequence of... So by the way, for people that don't know who he is, he wrote a book called, like, Eight Rules, Eight Simple Rules for Living Your Life or some shit, Nine Rule. I can't remember. It's some goddamn self-help book that appeals to incels. Basically, he tells you that women don't belong in the workplace. That it's society's liberal fucking Marxist philosophy's fault that you feel weird. Women shouldn't wear makeup because it's some kind of fucking sexual thing. Like, dude has some crazy fucking opinions. That he's never fucking thought out when he's confronted with it. Like, he... uh, but he criti- one of the main points of his book is that you should never criticize anybody else until you clean your room. As in, do personal introspection. Because he, he paints everything as personal moral failings, such as drug addiction, which was hilarious when he got addicted to drugs. Of benzodiazepine use for anxiety or more accurately from a combination of using that medication and then ceasing its use once I realized it was dangerous. Um, Once I realized it was dangerous. Now, ladies and gentlemen, he is a clinical psychologist. He is a clinical psychologist. That's put me in and out of hospitals for much of the last year. And he didn't realize that benzos were dangerous until he got hooked on them. In Canada, in Moscow, in Russia, and... Yeah, he went to Russia for some experimental treatment. My family searched for specialists who could aid me in the severe... Beef daughter. She went on a party in Europe, got coronavirus, and then gave him coronavirus. Consequences of both the benzodiazepine use and, and its cessation. Um, I'm telling... Because, like, if you don't know who he is and you're, like, hearing this story, me talk about it, you're probably thinking I'm being really hard on him. But no, 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 no. This dude is fucked up. <laughs> Poor John Ritter. I would trade John Ritter for Jordan Peterson any day. 16, 2017, early 2017, according to the prescribed um, recommendations, and really never give it a second thought. Uh, that was a mistake. Uh, to Remember, clinical psychologist. Anyways, I've learned some things during that trying time i suppose or at least i i can tell you what kept me going during what was certainly the worst period of my life um family now his wife for sure. died uh, friends she had cancer i know that for sure i believe she died and that's when he got the benzo addiction so i was able to continue writing um something that i'll talk about 
probably within the next month. My oh, he's going to drop a book on us. My wife, Tammy, my son, Julian, and his wife, Julian, and my daughter, Michaela, and her husband. That's beef daughter. Have been of inestimable value to me. And, and her husband, there's some crazy story about her husband, too. Um, I can't remember exactly what was going on. She cheated on somebody. And me to Russia and to Serbia. A weird fucking relationship. Those episodes were extremely grueling and lasted for months. Um, but I'm alive and I have plans for the future. I want to thank those people from the bottom of my heart, my extended family and friends, whom I will name elsewhere, went above and beyond the call of duty. In my estimation, I certainly not convinced that I would have the character to provide to anyone you don't. what they provided to me. So that was uh, humble. Yeah, you have no empathy, motherfucker. Um, my work, this sort of work, although it was all writing and not video production, was also extremely useful because I could sustain myself by producing and then culling through thoughts that were helpful. Now, I will give him, I will be anguish. charitable. He's actually a very good professor. I've watched some of his lectures. I've even heard him make really good points. He just ventures into this political philosophy and he doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground. <laughs> yeah, he's also human, but he's a clinical psychologist. You're, you're not understanding what I'm saying. He couldn't feel empathy for drug addicts until he became one. Even though through his training, he should absolutely, he didn't know benzos were dangerous until he took them. His colleague that got him his job at the University of Toronto, I believe was where he was teaching, until he got fired over some bullshit because uh, he made a big stink about how he wouldn't say, uh, wouldn't call a transgender person by their proper noun as a teacher. He compared it to the Holocaust or some shit. Like, it was really insane. This dude has a persecution complex. But he can't feel empathy for other people. That's why he wrote a book talking down to everybody and then got hooked on benzos. I suppose. And my lack of hope for the future. Um, hopefully, we'll see. But hopefully much of that is behind me and I can return to something resembling. Now we might actually read his book on the air. That would be fun. Apparently his very first book maps of meaning is batshit crazy. At least for the next while I completed a biblical series devoted to Genesis in fall of 2017. And that has proved very popular. I, I, it's a strange word to use for a lecture series like that. Um, I'm going to start working on the next book in the Old Testament, which is Exodus, but in that will take a while. But in the interim, I bet I that's I'm going to produce videos devoted to Proverbs. It's a lot of Jewish history or a book of wisdom. Um, you've all heard, no doubt, that wisdom is proverbial or is that or that there's such a thing as proverbial wisdom and that phrase. So it stems from... He absolutely from believes that men and women can't work together in the workplace. Single sentence aphorisms imparting some truth. I think the analysis of those... He believes in hierarchies. In a relatively short period of time will prove of benefit and to And he uses media. lobsters to illustrate his point. I'm inclined to watch or listen to my analysis. Um... I would also. I like wish it would matter to people before it matters to them. Thank you for continuing to I wish it didn't take having to be personally affected by something before you could put yourself into other people's shoes.